catch yourself. <laughs> you hear the nigga like, oh shit, you try to shoot me, nigga? And he take off. <laughs> oh shit. This is 25 to Life with Uncle Yashua. This is 25 to Life with Uncle Yashua. What's good, family? Welcome to Uncle Yashua 25 to Life Tales. I got another story coming for y'all. I know, guys, I got to get more stories, right? I got to get them coming quicker. The reason, the reason why it's so hard, guys, because I got a whole nother YouTube channel. I got a ministry. If this was my only channel, I could crank out these stories all back to back, but I got to do better. Got to do better than like once every eight days. Like, how am I going to grow, right? I can't grow if I don't feed y'all, right? So I got to figure out a way to keep feeding y'all these stories, right? And maybe try to do a little, I don't know, try to do some news stories, something. I got to feed the channel so I can continue to grow because y'all are used to be being fed every day from the other channels, but I got two channels, guys, so I got to feed the ministry too, so my bad, my bad, but I got a dope one coming today. It's probably going to be a nice little decent size. I know y'all probably like some of the long stories. Now, let me start this off. First of all, we are not promoting none of this. This is past life experiences. This is stories of the past life, the traumatic life that we lived and the daughter of Babylon, what America done to the people of the book, the children of Yashara, what they call Israel that was brought over on those slave ships. This is what happened to us here in this captivity that we get went into for us, what, disobeying the Most High. So I'm just telling the stories that turned me into Uncle Yashua, turned me into the man that I am today. So I went through a lot of trauma. All right, a lot of crazy stuff coming from Parkside Projects, Hempstead, Strong Island, New York, also from Bedstar, Brooklyn, also from Southside, Jamaica, Queens. All right, from Queens, well, different parts of Queens too. But all right, so a lot of bread, a lot of my bread and butter stories are coming from Hempstead, Strong Island. All right, Parkside stand up all day, Hills, Heights, Terra Ave, all that. Let's go. Now, this story here is a dope one. All right. So I'm going to teach y'all some, this is, it's about some life lessons as well. So um, I'm going to talk about my boy, Sully. Shout out to Kev Sullivan. Big Kev out there. I know somebody, I know who, I know people from, from, from Hempstead going to watch this, going to be like, whoa, he got a story about Kev. Yeah. What's up, Kev? How you doing, big boy? I know you probably bench is still benching 500 pounds. Kev is a beast. But anyway, so now the, the, the moral of this story is, guys, this the deal. When you, when I was hustling, you have to use your intelligence, right? So any type of drama that you bring to your hood will bring police, right? And police stop money. So I was always smart enough to like, dag, I got to reduce the level of drama to bring police. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is um, at this time, my, I got my street popping, right? This is the same street from the story when them stick up kids was coming. I don't know if this is before that or after that. I don't remember what time frame this was, but this is that same season, right? So my hood is popping. It's making, I mean, I'm making so much money on my block that people are starting to catch wind of it. So I had already had to do another process with this Jamaican kid. This is a Jamaican named Star. He's an older kid named Star. Star and Demel. That was Demel, man. And my brother Ty. Ty feels Ty. Shout out. What's up? What's good? Ty. Ty gonna like that story about Star. Star. Star was a Jamaican. So I had to do. I had to do a move for Star that you're gonna learn. And I had to do a move for Big Jerry White, the big, uh, big Jerry White with the locks. Y'all know Jerry White, the the football coach, the football player. Uh, shout out Big Jerry. Me and me. I had to do a thing, right? So anyway, now. I think this is before, I think this is before I had, I don't know. I don't know if this is before the Jerry White incident and the thing with Star or after. 
But um, every now and then, what would happen is every now and then. So I have my block running from 12 a.m. to 6 in the morning. So remember from the other story, I would get to my block at 12 a.m., un, you know, un, um, uh, take my bike out the trunk, put my put the bike together, ride over to my hood and get my night started. Y'all remember from that story, right? When the stick up kids, right? So every now and then it would be it would be somebody would come and try to hustle on my block because on uh, the way him stay work on Parkside, it's like you don't own the block. Right. So we got a whole hood. So we got South Franklin. We got that. My street was Elm Street. You got the projects. You got the shacks. You got all different. You got Grove Street area over there was on them from Grove Street projects. So you got so many different areas. Right. Then you got the drive right there on across the other. You go. What's the name? Right. Go across the fence. You got Martin Luther King Drive projects. So no one ever really owned streets like so. It's just like we just all hustle. But at this time, I I claimed Elm Street. I claimed it. Only reason why I claimed it is because I put in so much work to 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 with the stick up kids. So y'all remember the story, right? When the stick up kids came to get me, because I was shooting out with them so much, and when it was uh, foggy, man, I'll tell you, it was called like a nightmare on Elm Street season, and a lot of the um a lot of, a lot of dudes was was wasn't out there. You know what I mean? I hate to say they were scared, but they wasn't out there. A lot of dudes was not hustling at night at that time. I'm telling you, Brad and them, um, the God was at the projects. Brad and them was at the other side, and um, sometimes Kev Sullivan and Wesley and them used to be over there. I mean, not Kev Sullivan, Kev Kev Kerr, Kev Kerr and Wesley and them. Some of my old OGs, they used to be over there at the shacks too, some some sometime. But most of the time, most people wasn't out at night at 2, 12, 1, 2, 3 in the morning, not on Parkside. If you if you were hustling and you from Parkside, you wasn't out there. Facts. So I, I'm not saying you you was punk or pus, P-U-S-S-Y or whatever, but you wasn't out there. Facts. Because there was almost nobody out there. So because I was having the shootouts, with the stick up kids so regular, like y'all gonna see more of those stories that I lay claim to the block. I'm like, this is my, like, guys, I shut them down. Like I stopped them from coming. Me, Dolo, to going to war with them. Remember, I tell you, see how they came, they was coming. After that one, I think I got another story. I got some more stories coming. Like I was dumping on them so much going to war that they stopped coming, right? So when they stopped coming, now the, the, like I the I I I I got my block so popping because a lot of people weren't hustling at night that late because of those stick up kids what they was doing. Remember they was robbing you and they were shooting you. Now because of that, my my block is making so much money. Elm Street. So I took Elm Street from Laurel to South Franklin. Elm Street, Sister Brown House. What's the name house? Uh, uh, the crack house. What's the name? Not Will. Um. Carl, Carl's house. So I had Carl's house, the one next to Sister Brown, and then the whole street. All right. So anyway, now my block is making, I'm make, I ain't about to say how much because I don't know, man. I I I I don't I don't trust this system. Like this is all past tense, but I don't trust be saying no no amounts and all that. I don't trust all that. You know what I mean? This is all past tense, and I served my time for this. So anyway, so I'm making a ton of money, right? A lot of money. So because now I got the hood, I, I got my block, I got it quiet now, meaning the stick of kids, they're not coming. So after a while, people started coming back out. So as people started coming back every now and then, I'll have somebody come on my block and try to open up shop. So what happened is I'll get there. So I get there 12, um, 12 at night. So I'll pull up. And when I pull up, Either Sammy or Pooch, um, uh, 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 a Boxconi or one of them, they would come up and be like, uh, such and such is here tonight. So I remember the time Big Jerry, so I ain't going to tell, I'm going to tell this story another time, but I remember the time Big Jerry's there. I think it was uh, Boxconi came. He was like, we got a problem, bro. I'm like, what? Big Jerry set up on the corner right by Sister Brown House. I'm like, Jerry who? Big Jerry from Arthur Drive. He's like, that's a problem, bro. He got a whole big bag of crack. He got it in a big, a big, um, a big Ziploc bag, a Ziploc bag, the big ones that store freezer stuff that you put freezer meat in the freezer. He got that thing full of crack and he just digging in it and get, 
He dick, he got he's standing on the corner, and it's a street light on Sister Brown's house on her corner. He's standing on the corner and he's under the street light, and all the feeds are coming, and he's just digging in the bag and giving it to him like it's candy. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, that's a problem, right? He just give it, and I'm like, so I ride up, and by the time I get there, I look, and this nigga is he got all my feet, he got feeds all around him. And he making money on now. It's pat, it's like 12 something, something, right? Now I have no problem. Like I, like I, I had established. I said because so, I'm gonna tell that story another time. Other people came, like swinging them came. No disrespect. It's just facts. It is what it is. I'm telling that story. I'm telling stories. You don't like it? Come see me. I mean, it's facts. You, you can say what you want. You, you ain't gonna tell me it ain't, it ain't facts. That's what happened. All right. So I remember when swinging them came, and I had to establish this thing. Like, yo, I understand. Like, we all from Parkside, but I earned this block. Like, I established this. Like I, I earned that block guys from, and I was only claiming it from 12 a.m. to six in the morning from, from my life. Like me shooting out with them. I felt like I earned this, like this is blood. Like I earned this in blood. Like I could be dead 50 times earning this block. You ain't just about to come and think this is just free. Nah, I know that ain't how we get down, but this is how I'm getting down now. So I had already set up and 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 let them niggas know like y'all could come out y'all got all day y'all got all morning y'all got i leave at 6 a.m y'all got to 12 a.m make all the money you want you right because this 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 block i got elm street popping like popping so they coming from all over so i'm like y'all can make up but when i get here at 12 a.m everybody need to be gone Y'all need to go back to the shacks, go to the drive, go on South Franklin. Like you could go, it's you can catch the outskirts, go build you some, build you one on Maple, go on the corner of Brick Step Store, do something, but not on M. Right. So I established that. So now every once in a while, I would get there and it'd be somebody else on my corner. And I'm like, all right, so now this is the story. First of all, so this story involves my boy Big Kev Sullivan. Now, Kev, Kev is my boy. Now, we, 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 me and the funny thing, me and Kev became really cool after this incident. I think this incident made Kev have a level of uh, respect for me, right? Not saying he ever disrespected me, but I guess it made him have a high level of respect for me. And um, so then he, you know, he reached out and we became cool. And that's my boy. I love Kev. That's my Kev is crazy. That's my boy. Kev is a fool. So um, now Kev, um, Kev is older than me, probably about two years older than me. And he used to play sports, football, and all that, all that right? And um, Kev could fight, right? Now this was, this is before Kev got really big. So um, I mean, big, big, big. So Kev, um, like, I don't know what he's doing now, but right before I left, Kev was benching almost 500 pounds, like five plates on each side. All right, y'all know. Anybody who worked out, y'all know what I'm, and I'm talking about Kev had put, put four plates, 400 and something, four, 415 pounds on each side and put his feet up on the bench and be like, boom, boom, boom with 415 pounds with his feet up. So y'all know I'm talking monster. Kev could lift a car, all right? So now, there was an incident. I'm going I'm to rewind, right, to, 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 to give you some context. So my boy, Rodman, shout out to Rodman. That's my boy, Sean. So uh, y'all, y'all know Sean, Sean Waffet, right? Everybody know Chachi or Rodman. Like we call him Rodman's Chachi, right? So shout out Sean, FBI for Life. That's Flamboyant Boys Incorporated. Ain't no, <laughs> ain't no fair stuff. That's what, that's what we used to be back in the days before we used to have a crew, right? Flamboyant Boys Incorporated. So, um, so. Rodimez, there was this big dude named Dexter, big, big head Dex. Dex had a big, big head. I was about to curse. A big, a big ass head. I'm sorry. I got, I got to keep it real. Dex head was huge. Now, Dex, Dex, um, I think Dex was probably like a year younger. Dex used to be skinny with a big head, but then he started working out. And I guess his genetics, some people genetics are just crazy. So when they work out, they just boom, they just blow up. Dex turned into a monster muscle man. And he's already like six foot, Dex about six, five. So Dex got so big, like his muscles was on muscles, like in his head and he tall. So Dex was walking around, he'd be walking around with his shirt off like a big muscle man. So he used to have people scared of him, right? 
So Dex, Dex was to be always cool, right? Dex never used to start problem, but I guess since he got those big muscles or something, he started turning, I don't know, he started wilding. So I remember uh, Ryder met Sean, that's my boy. So Sean, Sean was short. Sean is about five, five, six, right? And a little stocky, but Dex is like six, five. And Sean is like five, six, right? And Sean is regular, just regular, don't work out or nothing. And Dex is super big muscle man. So something happened. And I think Dex fronted on Sean, something happened. And I remember Rodimez, they was, we was at the projects on 71 side and Rodimez was going to square up with him, right? So when I'm looking, I'm like, damn, Rodimez is about to fight Dex. Cause Dex was big. I was, I was questioning that. I was like, Dad, I would not want to be, I would not want to have to fight him right now. Cause he's so diesel. So him and Rodman squared up and Dex thinking, you know, he doing all this, like, yeah, all big, like, whoa, whoa. he do all that. Rodman like, did like this, ducked, went to hit him. Dex threw his head, his head up. Rodman went and grabbed him from his legs and scooped him and slammed him. Boom. Yo, this, Big muscle, big head. That nigga hit that cement so hard. You can hear his bone crack. You heard his shoulder crack on the cement. It said, crack, like boom. And like, I'm like, oh. At first we thought neck crack, right? And I'm like, oh man, sure, sure, sure just caught a body. And he said, ah. Oh, when he, he squeaked, ah. And his shoulder, and it cracked out of his place. And you could see the shoulder dislocated from the thing. So it was like, it looked like hanging. It, like, it, it looked like it was hanging. He was screaming, ah! And he screamed, right and start punching him. Boom! He hit him in the face. He screamed, ah! Boom! He just, I'm like, damn! Rodman start tearing him up. I mean, he beating the big muscle bow. I mean, he tearing him up. So then out of nowhere, there's a bunch of people said, out of nowhere, Kev Sullivan just came. And I don't know why, Kev. Maybe, Kev, you could explain this to somebody one day. I don't know. I never got a chance. I, I forgot. I, sh- I wish I would have remembered and got a chance to ask Kev why he did that. Because I know Rodimus and Kev used to play football for him to high. So I don't know why he liked Dex and, uh, more than Rodimus. So I don't know. Kev had nothing to do with it, right? So all I know is Kev pushed him. Get off him. So Rodimus turned around and he was like, yo, Kev, this ain't got nothing to do with you. This ain't got nothing to do with you. He said, it do now. And I'm like, damn, why Kev? You know what I mean? Why Kev getting in it? So, so Rodman's like, man, I don't want no beef with you. I don't want no beef with you. And Kev said, boom, and hit this nigga so hard and so fast. He hit Rodman so hard and so fast that I did not want to get hit like that. I was like, I do not want to ever get hit like that. It was so fast. Now, this was the thing. It was so fast and so, like, precise. It was like you aiming a gun. At, it just, like, it, like, hit its mark. It was like, shoo, boom, and this, and it, it just, ooh, and right away, boom, he went, and he, like, dropped a little, and he stood up, and he, he put his hands up, and you could tell he was, like, dazed a little, and the kept said, yeah, you want to, yeah, fight me, nigga, fight me. So he threw up, and I'm looking like, and Kev just said, shoo, I mean, he was hitting them so fast and so hard. Every hit was like, I was like, oh, my goodness. Now, Radamez is my boy. I want to help him. But Kev is my boy, too. But see, we're all the same hood. I, so it ain't like Kev is not my boy. Like, you know, we ain't, we ain't close like now. We close now. We, ain't, we wasn't close then. We never had a beef. It was just a respect. Everybody knew me. I was Rashawn. You know what I mean? So, and that's Kev. So, ain't nobody ever dissed me. I never dissed Kev. He never dissed me. We never had a beef, right? So it was never. But you know, we weren't close. But we never had a beef. So, and 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 Rodimus is my boy. So I don't know what to do. Like I kind of want to jump in, but I know Kev. So I'm thinking, like I want to jump in, but I'm like crap. Like, do I start this beef with Kev? Because if I start this beef with Kev, it's 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 going to go to death. Because I can't beat Kev. I'm uh, 110. I just keep it real. See, that's the thing about Uncle Yashua. I keep it real. It, this ain't they, I can't beat Kev. 
I, I know I can't beat Kev. I can't beat him with these, right? So that means I gotta, I gotta go here, and Kev ain't no punk, right? So if I go here, Kev is going here. So it's on. It's you gotta make. I had to make a choice. This one is over. One of us is going to die or go to jail. That's your two options. I'm either we either gonna be dead. Or, or, or laid up in a hospital full of bullets and probably still end up jail in jail for shooting that, you know, we're going to catch a charge or we're going to be dead. So I'm, 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 I'm making these decisions in the moment really fast. So, my, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to, I'm like, I want to, like, I want to jump in, but I don't want to, I'm not trying to fight Kev, but not, not, not only because I can't beat Kev and not only because it's going to go life or death, but I don't got no beef with Kev. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like, Kev is not like he not my boy. He's like, you know, I'm like, crap, but he hitting Radamaz with the kitchen sink. Like, he hitting Radamaz with, like, sledgehammer punches, right? And I'm like, but Kev, why are you taking up the decks? Like, what? what? Like, and, and, it, and it was personal. And that's why I said I never asked Kev. One day I wish I could ask Kev. Why was it so personal? You could tell it was personal by the way he was hitting Rodimus because it wasn't called for. It was extra. And I don't know. Maybe he had some beef. Maybe, maybe Rodimus messed with one of his chicks or something because Rodimus was a pretty boy. Kev, Kev is a fly, fly nigga too. You know what I mean? They're both pretty boys type of thing. But um, yeah, Rodimus looked Puerto Rican. That's why we call him Rodimus. He ain't Puerto Rican, but he a pretty boy, right? So maybe some, something happened like that or something, but I don't know. So um, So anyway... I'm 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 making this decision, split decision. So I'm like, oh, I can't. The only thing I could do is try to stop him, right? So I, I I'm like, yo, Kev, right? And so Kev, so Radamaz is like trying to fight back. He's trying to punch, and every time he punch, Kev is like, and like, like I've literally never honestly seen such accurate punches. I mean, punches were like they were like being written like a, a a a line that you draw to hit his mark, his target. He was ducking, shoo, boom, and they were they were so accurate and hard. I mean, the, the level of power, they were popping. It, you know, it, it, it like shattered a project, bro. It was like, and he just kept hitting them, right? Like would fall, and then he would hit them and pick them up off the ground. Like he would fall, and he would hit them, boom, and he would lift up, and they would catch him. Boom, and he'd fall back down, and he'd catch him again. Boom, and lift him back. I'm like, then he'd grab him and pick him up and stand him up. Come on, fight. Stand him up and push him back. And I'm like, damn, Kev. And it's like he hitting him and blood is busting out and stuff is swelling. I'm like, dude, Kev. So I just try to grab him. And I'm like, he looked at me. I'm like, please don't. I'm like, please don't hit me with one of those. That's how I feel. Like, please don't hit me with one of those. But I had to stop him because he like, it was like he was going to kill Radamaz. You no, know I mean those punches was too hard, guys. So then I grab him, and he, and then somebody else. I said, "Grab him!" Somebody else grab him. <laughs> Just leave me to grab him. <laughs> he might turn on me. Think I'm trying to jump him or something, right? So I'm like, "Y'all grab him!" So we start grabbing, him, and everybody start pushing Kev back. And so I said, "Somebody grab Rodham ass!" And I'm like, then I look at Dex. I said, "Yo ass, yo ass, what you got your ass whipped for? You started this shit, and now you got my boy." bloodied up. I mean, he got right on his beat up. Die. I wasn't liking that with Dex because Dex used to be cool. I'm like, why are you starting? Now you're trying to be a tough guy. I want to be hustle. Dex ain't never hustle. You know, he come from a regular, he regular person. He want to hustle drugs now because you all big. I ain't like that, Dex. I ain't like, y'all know what I'm talking about, big Dex. I ain't like that. And Dex was cool. So, so then whatever. So Kev stopped, whatever, you know, he put this hat back on and I'm like, damn. So the thing I never like, I was like, damn, Kev could fight. <laughs> Kev could fight for real, for real. Like, that's a real ass fight. I'm like, damn, that nigga could fight. I'm like, note to self, I never fight that nigga. Boy, he ever, that's why I was like, if he ever got some beef with me, it's going down. I'm killing you, Kev. I'm shooting this nigga. Because I ain't never fighting this nigga. This nigga will not, I don't know. I could fight, but I, I could fight. But... I mean, I can't fight that good. It's something. <laughs> I don't know. It's next level. Like, I don't want to get hit by that. I don't want to get hit with punches hurt. So I don't want to get hit by that. I've been hit with a bat in the head. I've been stabbed. I've been shot. I've been all that. 
but you know, so I'm tough, but I don't want to get hit with those haymakers. So anyway, now we this later, much later. So that was a while ago. That was we were younger. You know, what I mean, I was way early. I was probably like five years earlier than what I'm about to story I'm about to tell now. So now I got my block, right? I'm doing my thing. So I come out, 12 o'clock. I get there. I pull up. I don't know who it was. Sammy, Mike, Leon, Bosconi, somebody. Somebody come up. You're right. We got a problem. What is it now? Bam is on the corner. Bam. Little fam, fam, fam is a problem. You know why fam is a problem? Because that's Kevin Sullivan's little brother. Because he Kev's little brother, ain't nobody trying to mess with fam because they don't want that beef with Kev. So because of it, fam can be a nasty little bugger. He could be a spoiled little ass, but fam, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. See, a lot of people used to be scared, all right? Fam will, he will, he will start stuff and do stuff because he got a green pass. Kev is Kev Stellman, little brother. You know damn well if 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 you mess with fam, you gotta answer the cat. So he got a green pass. Fam got a green light to do whatever the hell he wants. And you know, people in the hood with that kind of green light, with that family, they literally be uh, annoying and shit, right? Pardon me, language. They be aggravating. Everybody know in every hood, California, Texas, uh, you know, Florida, New York, wherever, Atlanta, wherever you at, be more, anywhere you at, you know, those little niggas that got that that guy got like a crime family, or they they their family is the Jacksons or the Johnsons, and it's a bunch of them, and they could fight. You know, the little one that be in school bullying everybody. You know, just bad only because. All right, so the fam could be a bit much because of that because he know he kept little brother. He does sh- fam, fam fam. You know what I'm talking about. See, the me thing about Unc, I always kept it real then, and I keep it real all the time, right? And Kev know what I'm talking about. Kev, you know he fam was probably starting mad crap and got you because of you. You know what I'm talking about, Kev. So, fam would do stuff like, you know, he would, he would, because so fam used to hustle too, right? So he would do stuff, take people packages, uh, take over people's stuff because they ain't going to want that beef because of Kev. So when I get there, they like fam on the corner. I'm like, please tell me they ain't talking about fam, fam. Fam? Kev, little brother? Yeah. Houston, we got a problem. If fam is on the corner, he's doing it purposeful. He's up there. He's probably like, yeah, let me see what you're going to do to me. Right? So I'm like, shit, we got a problem. Now, let me give you a little backstory. At this point, after I um, this is after I ran all the stick up kids. My my block is my block is popping. There's a there's a legend, uh, a street legend. He's dead now. Cool cow killed him. His name was Pudgy. I remember Pudge put that nod to my temple, right? I got it in a song. So this is Pudgy ever ever. So Pudgy and Bam Bam, these are Devos. So I remember. I had it on with Pudge and I had it on with Bam Bam. So because I was, I, I needed help out there, right? I needed help. I needed another gun. I needed another gunner out there. So what I did, I went to Queens. I was living in Queens at the time. So my baby mama's Pam's, uh, her, her, um, her cousin, his name is Teddy. Teddy is from Queens. And Teddy is a notorious um, uh, house burglar <laughs> in Queens. He would rob all the, Queens drug dealers' houses. He was like jumping, going Supreme Team house, Supreme in them, and, and housing them, and robbing them. Facts. Teddy was no joke. And one time they caught him. I'm going to tell that story another time. But Teddy used to bring me all type of stuff. He would rob the drug dealers' house in Queens and bring me the stuff. Fur coats. So Pam would have big, full-length fur coats, chinchillas and stuff. He brought me leather ballys and leather. Like, he would bring me all. So I buy all the stuff he robbing from the drug dealers in Queens, right? And they caught him one time until that story was bad. So I needed help. So I'm like, I need another gun. So I said, yo. So I said, yo, uh, Pam, tell your cousin, come over. So I said, yo, Teddy, I got something for you. 
I said, I want to, I'm going to hire you. You're going to work for me. We're going to work um, seven days a week. We're going to work from 12 a.m. to six in the morning. I said, the only thing I want you to do, I'm going to give you a nine. I just need you to be ready to blast that nine. I need you to, I'm going to have you in all black. I said, I need you to never, ever talk to nobody. I said, they're going to, nobody's going to know your name. Nobody's going to know who you are. Don't ever talk to nobody. Never speak like you're mute. So I'm paying you so that they're going to have, it's going to be a level of fear because I know my hood and I know that they're going to fear him because they're not going to know who he is and he's not going to ever make friends. And he's going to be an all black like me. And I said, I just need you to be that gun. And when I need you, I need you to bust that gun. That's it. I need you to have my back everywhere we go. And I said, but it's my hood is very dangerous. Don't ever get caught up getting to know somebody because my hood is full of snakes. So they will rock you. I know you from Queens. I know y'all Queens, Queens thinking it's all that. My hood will eat you alive. It's no joke. Hempstead is no joke. It will suck you in. And it's a whole story coming behind that. I was totally right. And I said, do not mess with none of them girls. They will suck you in. Trust me. I know you're from Queens. I know you're from Southside. I know you're from St. Albans. I know you're from Springfield. I know you're from Lawton. I know you're from all over Queens. Southside, uh, Queens, Jamaica, Queens, this side. But you ain't used to this hood. This is a different level hood. Guess what? It sucked his, it sucked his ass in, part of my language. It sucked, wait till y'all hear that story. It sucked his ass in, guys. I'm talking about, should I give y'all a teaser? It sucked them in so bad. Listen clearly, I had to find him. We couldn't find him for a week straight. His, his, his mama, his baby mama, his people, my baby mama, Pam, like, where is he? We couldn't find him. And wait till I find out where I find him, found him at in the condition he was in. And he never made it out. You know how he got out? He ended up getting a 10 year sentence in jail. And that's what's getting able to snatch yourself out. My hood will suck you in. All right. So I, 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 at this time, I, I tell them, you're going to be there seven days a week from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. I just need you to be there with me. You don't need to do nothing but watch my back. And I'm going to pay you, listen clearly, $1,000 a night. $1,000 every night just to watch my back. Ain't that a hell of a job? I wish I, I wish I could make a thousand dollars right now. That already let you know how much money I was making. That don't mean nothing to me. I'll pay you a G a night, so you gonna get seven thousand a week. Stack it for your babies, whatever it is. You don't got to spend nothing. You don't got to do nothing. Thousand a week, but I just need you to bust that gun when I need you. All right. So I'm giving you that context because he's out there at this time. He'd been out there for a while, so my hood people in my hood started calling him X Man. Because unknown, because no, he wouldn't talk and nobody knew him, knew his name. So they used to call him X-Man. So when I would be out there, they'd be like, you ride X-Man here? Because sometimes I would send him to the store to get my blunts, to ride on the bike to the store to get my blunts. I'd be like, yeah, he here. I said, y'all niggas named him X-Man? They're like, yeah, X-Man, nobody, he don't talk. Nobody know who he is. So I like that name. I'm like, cool, X-Man, right? So now X-Man is with me, right? So I, um... I get there. So we there. So X-Men with me. We both ride up because he come with me from Queens. We both live in Queens. So when I had him a, a breakdown bike, so we both ride up. So I'm like, fam. So I'm sitting there. So X-Men look at me. He like, yo, who fam? I said, he a problem. He's like, you want me to shoot him? I'm like, nah, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I got to think this one through. So Scony, I don't know who it was. They was like, it's a problem, bro. He like, he running fiends away. He giving fiends. He giving them. Some, 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 his crack is whack. Like his, 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 his crack fam, he's selling, he's selling bullshit, bullish, right? Sorry, guys, I, I don't want to curse, but uh, I hate to curse, but I have to keep it real. I have to keep the stories authentic. He's selling bullshit. Uh, I hate, I hate to even do it. All right, but I have to keep the stories authentic. He's selling bullshit, right? 
So they're like, wow, it's he like messing up business. He got that bullshit out here and he's selling and he he making the fiends buy it. Cause fam is a bully. Like he he'll like buy it, like buy it, like your money type of thing. He'll beat up the fiends type of thing. He's a problem, right? He's spoiled. He's a little spoiled brat, can't lose, right? So and that's what fam had the long locks, right? So I'm like, shit. So I said, all right, let me see. So I pull up to the corner. And when I pull up to the corner, I look and I see him on the corner. And he had like two of his little boys with him because they live over by the desert. That part with Prodigy, uh, with Prodigy hang out from with Money Knowing him, and Dirty Harry from Prodigy Crew, Prodigy from Mob Deep, his crew. He, ain't, he live over there. So he got some of the boys from over there with him. So I'm looking. So he look up at me. He's like, yo, what up, Ra? I'm like, fuck this. Oh, my language. I'm like, I'm like, yo, what up, fam? No, and it's all good, bro. It's mad money out here. I'm like, this nigga. He doing it intentionally, right? I'm like, this nigga here. He doing this intentionally. That's that's a that's a that's that's a strong move. That's a chess move. That's a chess move, right? So he moving his queen on the chessboard. So I'm like, this nigga. This is mad money out here, bro. We gonna kill him all night. Like this nigga. <laughs> I'm like this nigga. I'm like, but I'm 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 playing chess, right? So I'm like, yeah, bro, we're gonna kill him all night. I got some weed. You want to smoke some weed? We rolling up. And he's standing right on the corner of Mighty K House, right across the street from Sister Brown, right on the corner. Like I pull it in because I don't want the police to see you on the corner. It's gonna make my block hot. So I'm like, this nigga. You want to smoke some weed? We roll it up. Nah, I'm good, fam. All right, bro, we're going to kill him all night. We out here all night. This nigga, right? I'm like, this nigga, right? So I'm like, all right. So I'm like, I turn the bike around. I go back down on the other side of Sister Brown House where, where, where um, I think it was Sconey who told me where Sconey was at. So I ride over there. So I'm like, shit. So he's like, what you going to do, bro? Like, that's fam. I'm like, I don't know, man. Give me a second. I, I got to do something. I got to do something. I got to think. Just give me a second. I got to think this through. So my ex-man, like, well, you know, what, what, what? I said, that's my man's brother. I said, it's no game. I said, it's no joke, man. I said, I made the wrong move. We, we, um, we're going to lose our block because we're going to have to kill or be killed. And um, it's no joke. Like, I'm going to have to kill Kev. Oh, he gonna kill me. It's Kevin, no joke. So I like yo, I just need to think this through. So now the part that I'm telling you, I'm not telling y'all to hustle. I'm not telling y'all nothing, but I am telling y'all to always use your brains in situations. Always take a moment to pause. Now I know it as being still. See, now I'm a different man. I'm a man of the most high. So what happens is the most high says he's in the stillness. Like the quiet place. Now what I do when I need to have wisdom or I need to think things through, I quiet everything down. You quiet everything down so you can think. You always have to be a thinker. Life is a chess game. You have to think. You just don't react off emotions. That's what women do, right? That's why you got to cover your woman to calm her down from her emotions. And a lot of the men now are effeminate that they react off emotions. But I was always really wise, right? That was just my situation. I was hustling because I know you're like, you were wise, but you were hustling. It was this thing I was born into, right? And it was my, I learned later to get up out of it. But so I'm telling you because whenever you get in a situation, stop yourself. Stop yourself. Quiet yourself down and think. Always think through the scenario. Think it through. So I was like, I need a minute. I need to think this because this is a very important chess move. I got a lot of money on my block. It's established and then everything could be over from this move because a war with Kev is going to be to the death and he coming. If I do something to his little brother, he coming. Facts, he coming. He coming. So I'm like, all right. So I I, I, I get on my bike and I'm, I mean, I'm on my bike and I'm sitting there. I'm like, all right. So I'm like, give me a minute. So I go further down by the church, King's Temple. There's bushes over there. So I'm like, y'all, give me a minute. I need to, I need to be quiet. I need to think. So I go over there and I'm just thinking, guys. I'm thinking, what can I do? What could I do? What could I do? I said, I know what to do. 
God. So I go back over to, I said, X-Man, come here. I said, this is what we're going to do. I said, Scone, go, go. You got your stuff? Go, go set up. I said, just be very careful. I said, I want y'all to um, stay down. Be very careful. Stay out. Because something's about to go down, but I want y'all to be very, stay by the trees. Just be careful, right? So uh, he leaves. So I said, X, this is what we're going to do. I said, I'm, this is what we're going to do. I said, we're about to play a game. It's funny thing, Kev, you never knew this is what I did. This is funny. Kev was fi- Kev going to find this out for the first time. So I said, um, what I'm going to do, I said, we're going we're gonna to go set up shop. I said, then I'm going to tell you, we're going to ride back up to the corner where they at. I said, we're going to fake an argument. Listen clearly. I'm playing chess. I'm thinking. We're going to fake an argument. So we're going to, so we're going to start off by Mighty K's garage, by Mighty K's driveway, right a little from the corner. I said, we're going to fake an argument. And I'm going to be like, yo, eh, fuck you. I'm like, fuck you, huh? Fuck you, nigga. Like, we're going to act like we, we, we really arguing. Like we arguing like it's on. Like, fuck you, nigga. I'm like, fuck you, huh? Nah, fuck you, nigga. What you want? Now, nah, nigga, why you tripping, nigga? You bugging. And fuck you, nigga. So then I said, I said, I'ma act like uh, we arguing. I act like we arguing. We're gonna yell. We're gonna get their attention. So everybody's looking. So we're gonna have everybody looking. Cause the fiends out there, and I know fam and his boys on the corner, they're gonna look in. I said, then I'ma ride off and I'ma ride to the corner of Sister Brown's house. I said, so I'm gonna get to the corner and I'm gonna sit there under the street light, and I'm gonna sit there like I'm pissed. Like I'm mad at you. And then I want you to be like, yo, rah, you tripping. And then I'm going to say, fuck you, you faggot. And then I want you to be like, man, fuck you, you're a faggot. I said, and then I'm going to say, nigga, I'll shoot your ass. You're like, nigga, I'll shoot you, nigga. I said, then I'm going to pull out my gun and I'm going to try to shoot you. <laughs> Fast. I said, I'm going to pull out my gun and I'm going to shoot at you. But I'm going to miss. That nigga said, that nigga face said, you're going to shoot at me. I said, I'm going to shoot at you, but I'm going to miss. He said, oh, hell no, hell no. I'm like, nigga, we got to do it. We got to do it. He's like, why? Nah, nah, why? What if you shoot me? I'm like, I'm going to try not to shoot you. I ain't going to shoot you. I'm going to try to miss. He like, I'm like, I'm probably going to miss because it's hard to shoot people. He like, I'm like, we got no choice. I said, after I shoot at you, then you shoot back at me. He said, you tripping, bro. I said, then after you shoot back at me, I'm going to fall, I'm going to jump off the bike and I'm going to run and I'm going to go to the side of the house and I'm going to shoot at you again. Bow, bow, bow. And then you shoot back. Bow, bow, bow. And then I'm going to run up the street and I'm going to shoot at you and you run down and act like I'm going to chase you and we're going to act like we're having a shootout. That nigga like, you ain't got a, you ain't got a better plan than this. <laughs> I'm like, it's going to work. Trust me, it's going to work. I'm like, we just got to do it. Just make sure you miss me, my nigga. <laughs> just make sure you leave. Make sure you miss. I'm like, you all right? You crazy, you right? You crazy. I'm like, let's do it, nigga. Let's do it. I'm like, it's on, nigga. Let's on. You got it? You got it? Just try to miss. You make sure you miss, right? I said, just make sure you miss me, nigga. You make sure you miss. I'm like, all right, it's on. So we get I get on the bike, we go down the street, go down there with Pooch and everybody set up. So I'm like, all right, everybody gets set up, everything. So Pooch and I'm like, damn, this nigga fam, he blowing up the spot, right? He's like, the fiends is complaining because he's selling bullshit. So he's like, he's messing up us. He's messing up the block for night. like fiends talking about they going somewhere else. And I'm like, he about to be out of here. And so Mike was like, what you going to do? That's care, brother. I said, I got this. Just y'all niggas just stay in the bushes. Be careful. Stay by a tree. Just stay by a tree. It's about to go down. You about to shoot that nigga? I said, nah, but stay by a tree. It's about to be gunshots. So just stay by a tree. I'm like, all right. I'm like, everybody stay by a tree. I don't want none of y'all niggas getting hit. So we do it. i like, yo, X, you ready? You're like, fuck, no. <laughs> I'm like, let's do it, nigga. Come on. Come on, nigga. Let's go. We got to do this, nigga. We got to do this. I'm like, all right. So... I said, as soon as we get up to Mighty K driveway, to the driveway, 
I said, that's when we, I'm, I'm sitting there, fuck you. So we pull, we ride up together and we get to the thing and I could see them on the corner, rolling blunts and looking, get to the thing. I'm like, nigga, fuck you. Like, fuck you, nigga. Like, fuck you, nigga. Fuck you think this is, nigga. You think you come out here from Queens? Fuck Queens, nigga. You're like, man, fuck you, nigga. Fuck Hempstead. I went, fuck Hempstead? I said, nigga, I'll lay your ass out out here. Nigga, fuck you, bro. Like, fuck you, you faggot ass nigga. I don't know why I even brought you out here, faggot ass nigga. Nigga, this is him stay. You want to talk some queen shit, nigga? Take your ass to Queens. Man, fuck that, bro. You be tripping, nigga. You bring me out here. You supposed to be my man. You flipping on me. Man, fuck you, nigga. You are some faggot shit. So I ride off, right? Excuse the F word. That's just how we talked. We talked faggot shit back then. We didn't say it wasn't sensitive, right? So I ride off. Right, so now I can see spam and them all on the corner. They smoking blunts, looking like the fuck, like it's a movie, right? So they smoking, they enjoy it. I can see it, like, oh shit, he got beef. I said, we got a movie. So I drive and I get to Sister Brown corner. So I park my, I sit, I got my bike, I sit on it. I'm sitting under this, under the light. I'm like this, and I'm looking over at him. He's standing on his bike, and I'm looking at him. So I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at family, looking at me. I was like. Man, fuck you, you faggot ass nigga. You like, fuck you, Ra. Fuck that nigga. He said, I ain't coming out here no more. I said, nigga, you'll come back out here if I want you to, nigga. I'll kidnap your ass and make you come out here. Man, fuck you, nigga. You think you all tough? I said, fuck you, nigga. He said, nigga, you what, what he say? He said, nigga, you, 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 he said, nigga, you think you tough? Then square up with me, nigga. I'm like, nigga, you think it's about fighting, nigga? I'm about that thing. He said, what, nigga? What? You want to do the thing? I do the thing. I said, oh, nigga, you think it's a game? He said, man, fuck you. I said, fuck you. That nigga, when I said, boom, everybody, that shit so loud, first of all, that shit, because it's quiet. It's like one o'clock in the morning, so it's really quiet. That shit said, fuck you. You hear the nigga like, oh, shit. You try to shoot me, nigga? And he take off, boom, oh, Shit, and I take off like oh, shit, boom, 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 and then I run to the side of the house, and he go boom, boom, and them niggas scatter. Bam, and like, ah, niggas start screaming. Them niggas scream. Ah, them niggas start running because bullets stay right there. I'm shooting this way, he's shooting this way, they right here. Them niggas scream and start scattering. Ah, I'm running, right? So I'm like, so, so I, I, I run to the side of the house. That shit said boom. I feel the bullet go boom. That shit almost hit me. I said, nigga, you almost shot me. Now, this is the funny part. I got mad. Because I'm, I'm, I'm half crazy at this point from all the stick up shooting out with the stick up kids. I'm like half crazy because all the shooting out, right? So I literally got mad. The, mother, the, the bullet said, Doo. I said, nigga, you almost shot me. So I tried to shoot the nigga. Oh, and then the nigga said, boom. He, fell. he said, nigga, y'all not shot me. And then he shoot each other. We now we try to shoot each other. We literally is trying to shoot each other. So the nigga tried to shoot me. I'm like, oh, that's it. Hit the house. Boom. Hit the ground. I said, oh, shit. I fell this way. I said, boom, boom. And then nigga like, he started running. He like, fuck you, why? He tried to shoot back. And now I'm chasing. We trying to shoot each other. I said, and then as I'm running, he's running. And then it dawned on me. I'm like, nigga, you tripping. <laughs> I'm like, I'm running. And I remember, the, the, this is the funny part, guys. The reason why it dawned on me is because that's how it was when I was, so this happened at the same spot with Pudge, when, um, with the thing with Pudge. I want to tell that story premeditated, though. But the thing with Pudge, I was, ch- I was running behind Pudge, chasing him up the same street. Up the, it was like I had deja vu in the moment. So I'm running and I'm boom, boom. I'm trying to chase him. He's running and I just had like a deja vu. And I'm like, nigga, you, it was like, I did this before. I said, nigga, you tripping. Like, like you bugging. Like I lost myself. Like literally. I, and, I'm, and I know he, he probably, it's because I lost myself and I tried to shoot him. <laughs> and you know I tried to shoot him. So that made him try to shoot me. So now we at war with one another. And I'm and I'm trying to chase him. I'm trying to dump on him. And then I'm like, I am tripping. First of all, if I shoot Pam cousin, she going to kill me. <laughs> first of all, Pam did not want me bringing her cousin out there. She's like, do not get my cousin life in jail messing with you. 
Like, do not he already doing enough crazy stuff in Queens, robbing people's houses. So I told her, no, I'm gonna take care of him. He ain't got to do nothing. I'm gonna pay him a thousand dollars a night. He'd be able to take his kid up. So I'm, I'm like, if I shoot her cousin, Pam is gonna kill me. I'm like, oh, you are tripping. So then I stop, and I'm like, yo, ex. He like, yo, fuck you, right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yo, ex, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going home, bro. I'm going home, fuck you. I'm going home. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, ex. I'm sorry. No, no, fuck that. Sorry, bro. You try to shoot me. I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. I was tripping. No, stop, stop, stop. He's like, no, fuck you, bro. I'm going home. I'm like, how you gonna go home? You gonna ride the queen? I'll find my way. I'll find my way. And he left. He left. Um, later on, I find out what happened. Something bad happened from that night. And I'll tell that story another time. Something really bad happened from that night. Um, he left. And I was like, and so Mike and Poochnum was like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Like, wh what the hell happened? And I was like, I don't know, man. So I, I didn't tell nobody what we did, the plan, because a wise man, you never tell. See, because if I tell somebody you can trust and they'll say it was a plan or everything, it was a game. And then Kev, next you know, they coming back. Fam is back because they think, it, nah. So I didn't tell nobody. I just said, yo, you know, we started arguing and I, I lost it. I, like, y'all niggas know I'm shell-shocked because they, they know I'm crazy at this point because I, I was shell-shocked. I was freaking crazy. It's the only time I've ever really been crazy because all the shooting out with the stick-up kids, I was crazy. You go crazy. You literally go crazy. Like I said, that's what's happening in Chicago. That's also what happened in California with all the gangs doing the drive-bys. Once you start living that life and start doing it, it literally takes over you. It's a demon and you don't know it. And it literally possesses you and you go crazy. So I was crazy. I was shell I would have popped anybody at that point. At that point, I was never that crazy or that raw in my life before. I was never a punk, always about that life, but I was never crazy. I was crazy at that time. Anybody would have started beating me, I will pop your ass. I swear, I popped that shit. I'll pop the shit out your ass. Part of my language. I so I hate that. I have to keep it real like this, but that's what the language I was speaking at that time. And I have to do this. So pardon me for my ministry and people who watch this. I do not curse. I bridle the tongue, but I'm rehashing the truth. I have to keep it raw and real. So I told him, I'm like, yo, uh, you know, we start beefing and I'm like, and I lost it. You know what I mean? I try to shoot the nigga. And then he tried to shoot back and it was on. And he's like, but we like X-Men. <laughs> they like X-Men. I said, I know, man. He's like, he ain't coming back. I said, he coming back. I'm going to get him back. And um, I did get him back. But more story to come for another. That's a dope, crazy story. A whole crazy story what happened. So I, um, I'm like, all right. So I'm like, yo, we out here by ourselves tonight. So I'm like, so them niggas is like, everybody kind of shook. Because they they looking at me like I'm crazy, right? They looking at me like this nigga that went off the deep end. For real. They pooch, Mike, all of them, they looking at me and I'm like, y'all straight? And everybody's like, yeah. You know, they looking at me like, yeah. Uh everybody, all night, everybody's like on pins and needles edge. They like, this nigga ride and lost his damn mind. Like he literally crazy. And they scared because they like, you might flip on me. You see, it's like, what, what's gonna happen if we mess up a package or something. You know what I mean? Like, what, you gonna shoot us now? Like, what the hell? So I'm like, all right, we out here. I'm like, it's us now. We out here. I said, I know that nigga gone. They ain't coming back. I rolled up to the corner. It was gone. They were, they were further up the street, right? Further up the street on the projects. So I rolled to the corner and I could see him over there. So I sat on the corner. So I heard fam say, Yo, wow. So I said, what up, fam? He said, you crazy, wow. The fuck is wrong with you, wow? I'm like, ain't nothing, man. That nigga tripping, nigga. Nigga Queens, nigga from Queens, y'all come out in front. That's my people, though, but he gonna come out here in front on me. He said, wow, you crazy, man. I'm out of here. 
He said, y'all have a good one, man. I'm be he said, I'm be at the shacks. I'm <laughs> like, I'm also at the shacks. Y'all niggas crazy over here. I said, all right, fam. He said, Rod, you crazy, man. That nigga ride crazy. So then they get on their bikes and they start riding. I can hear him riding and fam, he got this like uh, beach cruiser bike, you know, those beach cruisers. So he got the beach cruiser, his locks, he got the blood, and he got his boy, he riding, he like, he riding, he like, that nigga ride crazy. He riding off, he looked back, ride you crazy. He like that shit. He, for my language, he like that shit. He like it. I know he like it because fam crazy. Fam about that life. So he like, ride you crazy. And he riding off, going to the shocks. I'm like, well done. Now, we finished the night, everything cool. Uh, I, I, I went and found um, <laughs> X-Man and Queens the next day from his sister. I mean, from uh, um, his cousin, my, my baby moms. I found them. I talked to him. I apologized. You know what I mean? I got it straight. I'm like, nigga, I'll give you an extra G. I'm going to give you an extra thousand dollars for that. You know what I mean? And it won't happen again. You know what I mean? I, I won't make you do that again. You know what I mean? So that was squared off. Now, after that, I um I'm in the I'm in the gym. This is Brawley Park. That's the story. I'm gonna tell the story of Z Black, right? That story I told on this other dude's big channel, but he butchered the story. He butchered it, but I'm gonna tell a retell the story on here. So I'm in Brawley Park. So all of a sudden, because Kev is a big diesel, so all of a sudden Kev come in the park. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm with my boys, I'm working out. So I hear Kev go, yo, rah. So I look up. I'm like, yo, what up, Kev? He started laughing. I'm like, you no, know, me and Kev cool, but we never was close like that. He said, yo, come here, Ron. So I come over. He said, nigga, you about that life, huh? That's what you talking about. He said, nigga, my, bro my, bro my brother told me, nigga. My brother told me, nigga, you crazy, nigga. What the fuck? I said, nah, Kev, nigga, nigga, try to front on me. It's my people, though, but he tried to front. He said, I ain't know you was about that like that, bro. I'm like, ain't nothing, Kev. I'm like, nah, fuck that, nigga. He liked that shit. It's like, wow, that's what's up, nigga. I'm like, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. He said, yeah, man, my, my brother said he ain't fucking around over there no more. He ain't going to stay at the shots because you be tripping. So I'm like, nah, that's all good. You know, I wasn't going to front on your brother. You know what I mean? He's like, he said, yeah, that's what's up. So then after that, I would see Kev. And um, and it's funny because it's this nigga from Freeport named Gino. Shout out to my nigga Gino. Gino from now the Freeport niggas who was coming to to kill me, the stick up kids. I found out later that they were from Freeport. That's why I told y'all. And Gino worked with them. And Gino was a muscle, dark skinned nigga from Freeport. We had the nine A posse, and Gino was a fighter. So them the Freeport niggas hate Hempstead niggas. So Gino used to hate me. He hated me. He really hated me. He he probably wanted to beat me up, but you know he never had the opportunity because I always bought that life. Like you know what I mean? You ain't bought because these niggas are older than me. You know what I mean? So you know it's not like I can I can fight, but some people you know them old them niggas, some niggas can fight, 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 right? So Gino about Gino muscle, dark skin. Gino could fight, right? So, and he be knocking niggas, free poor niggas. So I know he all, oh, he, smoke would be coming out his nose when that nigga would see me. I'd be like, but I stay strapped up. Like, you know, chicks all, I would stay with chicks all around me. Like, I see that nigga like, I hate that nigga. Like, I hate that nigga. I'm like, I know this nigga hate me. He want to do me. So, I guess, so Kev. With Gino was Kev Man from Freeport because Kev had went to Freeport and and this big nigga named Biz, some big jail. So we a lot of jail niggas where I'm from in, in, in Long Island in Hempstead, Nassau County. Nassau County got the number one conviction rate in the United States for almost 50 years where they give you 15, 20, 30 years in jail for nothing. So we go to jail. We bitters. We in, we up north in prison. Nothing but Long Island, Nassau County niggas. Right in the city and the boroughs and stuff, you really got to do something to get loaded up with time. Where I'm from, you get caught with a damn pencil. They give you ten years, same shit, like facts. So we always go to jail. So it's a bunch of big diesel. So this nigga Biz from Freeport was a big diesel jail knockout nigga, and Kev was out there because Freeport niggas hate Hempstead niggas, Roosevelt niggas hate Hempstead niggas, and Kev was out there. And that nigga Biz at a at a club, and Biz they took it in the street, and Kev went by one on one with that nigga. 
tell you, Kev is no joke. So Kev went one on one with that big Freeport goon ass, Debo ass nigga, and Kev was a hipster. And because of that, that nigga Gino, I guess, fell in love with Kev. So him and Gino start hanging out. So now Gino, Kev be bringing Gino into the gym on the heights in Hempstead. And Gino from Freeport, so every time he come into the gym, he got two guns. So he always come in there fronting. So the nigga, this is funny. Gino, I know, if Gino see this, I know he gonna laugh. So Gino, we be in the gym working out on Brawley. G- this is Gino. He would come in the gym, right? Now Gino only about six foot, 5'11", something. But, but Diesel. Gino will walk in the gym. Now the gym is big. We all working out, a bunch of him stand niggas. We all working out. He'll walk in the gym and stand in the door and look at Screwface A bar. And then he'll go, I swear he did this before. I swear, to, I swear he did this before. He look around, he say, fuck everybody in this motherfucker. <laughs> he just yelling out of nowhere. Fuck everybody in this motherfucker. I said, this nigga crazy. How you just gonna come in somebody hood? You just stand in the door and say, fuck everybody in this motherfucker. You just coming in to start some shit. Like, and everybody just look at this nigga. And I said, I know he's standing there with two guns on his hip. We ain't got no guns. We in the gym looking out. We at the park in our neighborhood park. You nobody got no guns. Like, this nigga come and fuck everybody in this motherfucker. Like, like this nigga crazy. And then Kev, he come to see Kev. So then Kev be like, Gino, chill out. Man, fuck all these motherfuckers, punk ass motherfuckers. I'm like, this nigga crazy, right? So I'm like, whatever. I know he, the funny thing, I know he really talk about me. This is what's funny. Kev don't even know that this nigga talk about me. I know he talk about me because he hate me because my car, he have, I used to have the green and white 98, the most famous 98 with public enemy, the 98 posse. He had a light blue one after my famous green one. So he had the same car and, and and I used to have all the girls. So he was really just jealous. Sorry, Gino, that's my man. But Gino used to hate me. He my man now. That nigga used to, I love you. Love you, G. Gino is my man. So it's because of this, right? So then now after that, I'm in the gym, right? I'm in the gym. So all of a sudden, Kev come in and that's where he's like, yo, Rock, come here, right? So he says all that. He's like, yo, so he all happy. So then Gino walk in. So he like, he like, yo, Gino. He like, Ra here. So the nigga Gino look. He like, yo, what up, Ra? Nigga never spoke to me a day in his life. So I said, yo, what up, oh? All right, it's all good. He gave me a dot. I'm like, what the F is going? What the fuck? I might as well say fuck. I didn't say all type of words. Pardon my language, guys. Pardon me. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And then I'm like, ah, Kev must have told him, like, what happened? Like this nigga. So then Kev, so they was like, yo, wow, you gonna come work out with us? I'm like, this nigga, they want me. So I'm like, oh, uh, I guess. So we go set up. We working out together. They talking, Kev. Do, I'm like, after that, that was my, that Kev was my man. I would see him and then I would see, oh, I would see Gino. I'm like, yo, oh, what's good? I'm like, yo, what up, Rob? This oh oh is a fun oh is my man oh is a fun oh I see oh at Kennedy Park another park right another park. oh and Hempstead he's from um Freeport he's supposed to be in Hempstead right here Hempstead always with two guns I see oh at Kennedy Park he walking be like yo what up Ra everybody there be like what up he said you want me to set it on one of these punk ass niggas Ra I'm like nah oh we good these my people that's my man that became my man so I love you oh I love you Ken. Those are my people. That's funny thing. Oh, and Kev, y'all didn't know. That's how that story happened. That's how that happened. Kev, I had to do something to get spam out of there because I couldn't go to war with you. I couldn't go to war with you because that was we like we, it would have been to death. I know that. You know what I mean? And I know you know that, right? So I knew that. Like I can't just go to war with Kev. It's not that type of party. It ain't some shit where I could just shoot him. He shoot me. It's to death. Like, it ain't going to stop. Kev ain't going to stop. And I can't, like, he ain't going to kill me. So I did a very smart, it was a very, very smart move. And because of it, fam never came back. That kept a lot of people away for a while. That rocked out for a while. I kept my block. I got some more stories coming about the block. And I'm going to tell you the Jerry White one when I had to run him out of there. And then I'll tell you the other one was Star. That's a funny one with Star. The star like, me hard, me hard. That's, that's what I mean. If you ever even say me hard, because he's Jamaican, like me hard, me hard. 
He said, me hard. <laughs> it was so funny. Me hard. I'm sorry. It's just funny to me. I'm so stupid. He like, me hard. We say it all the time. Me hard. Me hard. Like sometimes. Sometimes we'd be on the block at night and you, you hear Mike and Pooch in the bar street, I'd be like, Beyond! Beyond! Because <laughs> he was on the ground and he was dying. He was getting a heart, he was having a heart attack. He's like, Beyond! Beyond! And I'm laughing because the nigga just stopped it to himself. Because they be, they be doing too much, guys. And I'm trying, I tried to tell him, like, nah, star, it's all good. Just do you. You know what I mean? Just chill out. Stop trying to take over my spot. I'm not scared of, you no, know, he thought I was scared of, I think it was pudgy or something, but I was doing a smart move. I was doing another brilliant move, right? I was doing the move. I was like, no, I'm not gonna do what I need. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shoot Pudge and do what I need to do. Only thing I need to do, I'm gonna say the story, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit. Only thing I need to do is by my time. See, when these um, legend um, uh, Debo's come home from prison, it's only a matter of time before they get caught again. They don't stay home long. They go from this hood robbing people and doing all this stuff. It's a matter of time. So I was just buying my time to, to, to for Pudge to get knocked again because I couldn't bring the heat. I didn't want to bring because the police keep coming. But Star saw me and he knew Mike and Mike, he thought I was scared. So he seen, he was expecting me to set it on Pudge, but I knew better this time. I said, nah, I'm gonna just lay low. So every time he come, I'm gonna lay low and give him about two, three weeks, he gonna get knocked. What y'all think happened? Two, three weeks, he was gone. And when they go, they go for five, six, seven years. They do a lot of time. But because of it, Star thought I was scared. So that made him say, I'm going to take over his block because he's scared. Bad choice. Bad choice. Didn't even want to do it. Star was an older, older dude. DeMel and them had him out there. You know what was a bad choice? That nigga end up on the ground talking about me. Me. Yeah. Look at him. Bust you in your heart. Your heart. Fronting. All right, that story's to come. All right, 25 to like, Uncle Yashua, 25 to like tales. I hope y'all got some wisdom for it. Don't do none of this, <laughs> okay? Do none of it. Do not hustle. Go get a job. Go get you a girl. Go work so you can have a little baby or whatever. Well, I don't know. Don't bring no babies in there. They, they crash in Babylon. Don't bring no babies yet. But get you a little girl. Get you a job. Get a family. Go to work. You don't want to end up in nobody's prison. You do not want to be doing this, busting your guns. You won't be hustling, selling no drugs. So do not do this at home. These are just street story tales of my life that led me to the prison industrial system that led me to almost get 55 to life, almost get 25 to life. I got 25 to life, but may, I let most high give me a second chance at my life. And y'all, I'll tell that story how I got out of that. It's a long one. Um, praise the most high for that. And now because of it, Changed my life around. And because my life is not my own, my life is his. He saved my life and he gave me a second chance to live. And because of it, I live my life by pouring in to his children and trying to help the Most High's children come back to keep his laws that he created us. He created laws when he created us. If you don't believe in a God, the Most High, the, the, the creator of all, then this ain't for you. But for those who, that's my job and my duty. My life is not my own. I gave it over to the Most High. I'm his son, and I'm Uncle Yahshua. I have Mashiach Assembly Ministries. You can log on to my channel, Uncle Yahshua Truth TV. Uh, 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 Uncle Yahshua, Mashiach Assembly Ministry. You can find me on YouTube. But we, our ministry is kind of big on YouTube. We got, you know, you know, everybody talking about Awaken, you know, Kyrie Irving and Kanye and them talking about We the Hebrews. I'm a Hebrew, and I've been teaching it for years. OK, so everybody just waking up now, you want to wake up, go to Uncle Yashua Truth TV. You're going to learn the truth just because these other people got Hebrew ministries don't mean they lawful and in order. You're going to get a messed up in these cultish Hebrew fools, fools out there with the Power Rangers clothes on, cursing people out on the street corners. We ain't into all that. It's the spirit of truth, a Bible. We follow the scriptures according to the most high. And there's no game. 
and, and that's who I am. So I gave my life over. So I give Caesar what Caesar's. I have, I, I take care of every, I pay my taxes. I don't do no crimes. I do nothing illegal. I follow the laws of the land that I live in. So live your life, right? These are just stories. So watch the stories, get you some popcorn or whatever, and learn from our life. Don't live this life. I was just lucky to be alive. That's the name of my book. Uh oh, lucky to be alive. The story of my life from the projects to the pulpit. The first series is out, guys. The Wrath of the Colombians. Look here. This is the book. It's on Amazon. So you can go to Amazon. You get the paperback book right here, or you could get the Kindle version right here. And I got the audio book coming too, where I'm going to be speaking it. Look at the book. Look, you can, you can open it up. Look at that. Open the page. You see this? Look, open up. Right? Open the book. Look, you can scroll up. See that? Look, look at this story. Dope. This book is crap. Yo, this book is fire. Buy the book. It's only $5.99. Buy $3.99. Buy the little, the, the, the what's the name? The little or the Kindle one. You can read it on your phone. Crap. This story is fire. I ain't putting this story out. So the stories that's in the book, because there's more series to come. Stories that I'm putting out in the book, I'm not putting out on YouTube. So you, those who buy the book, you got exclusive stories that ain't out on YouTube. This story, crack, the wrath of the Colombians, 1980s, 1990s, the Colombians, me going to pick up from the Colombians in New York City. I right? Crack story. Lucky to be alive. The story of my life from the project to the bull pit. The autobiographical memoir of a abandoned child. Series one, the wrath of the Colombians. Series two. Two is coming soon, the story of Ray. Woo! You know who Ray was? Ray was in a, for the Supreme Team. Yeah, under Prince. Yeah, Prince was the Prince was the killing machine. Ray was one of his top. Yeah, I met Ray in jail. The story of Ray. Ray was the one that brought me to the Bible. Facts. That one's coming. Dope. Lucky to be alive. Buy a book. Uncle Yahshua, 25 to like tails. Let's go. Keep it functional. Till next time. Bye. This is 25 to life with Uncle Yahshua. You want to know why they call me Lucky Lucha? They call me Lucha because I like to tuck that chuche. All the time on the grind getting that douche. This is a little story on 25 to Life with Uncle Yashua. Like and subscribe for more incredible stories every week. Police are on the scene of a triple homicide on Long Island. It happened overnight at a home in Hempstead. I'm from Hempstead, Park, the ghetto, the dark side, strong, the wrong, I think I'm